Hi, this is James from Sonic Chur. I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of our vibraphone instrument. Uh, we first released this in 2013, 2014. Um, we've recently given it a big update, um, a big uh, new modern GUI with uh, lots of added functionality, new Contact 6 effects, and uh, our gen generative tools, which um, feature in a lot of our instruments. Um, Back in 2013, when we recorded Vibraphone, we went to Peter Gabriel's Real World Studios to do that, which was a nice experience. Um, but we wanted to sample a Vibraphone because we'd been thinking about the uh, issue of how you could make a realistic uh, tremolo effect on the instrument. Um, traditionally, Vibraphone was quite difficult to sample because if you um, record the notes with the tremolo motors on, then you fix um, the speed of the tremolo motor to each note. So that means you can't play chords, uh, the motors would run out of sync, and it means that the speed is fixed. So traditionally, people have just um, sampled it with the tremolo motors switched off, and then they'd add an LFO effect to it uh, with a filter or something like that. But Dan had the brilliant idea that if you recorded the instrument twice, uh, once with the tremolo fans, uh, the fans make the characteristic effect, once with the fans in a vertical position, um, and a second time with the fans in a horizontal position, um, then once you had these two layers, which represented the um, the two kind of extremes of the um, of the tremolo sound, you could then use an LFO to just simply fade between the two layers. Um, we did it, and it, it worked brilliantly. It sounds um, completely natural, and uh, you get full control over the motor, and you can even turn it off if you want to. Um, so let's take a listen to how that sounds. I've got a Twin Peaks sequence here. So this is our tremolo um, control here. You can switch it on and off. You can hear without, it's very, very straight. And here it is. So full control. Up to quite fast, but it stays very smooth. What's nice is that you can assign a controller to this. So you just right click. Um, and I've got, I've got my mod wheel on it. So you could add some extra expressiveness to a performance as well, just varying it. Okay. Um, now, as I say, you've got two layers um, of the vibraphone, and we like to give you. There's there's other things you can do once you've got these two separate layers. So we wanted to give uh, access to this. If you go into this tab menu, um, this is where you access the tremolo control. Uh, this is the traditional mode, um, and you can see this knob here, duck. We, we included this uh, a little while after the original release because um, quite a few users found that the transient on the, on the vibraphone would occasionally get lost in the transition of the um, LFO between two layers. That is kind of what a traditional vibraphone does, in fact. Um, but, you know, because we've got a digital version, we wanted to see if um, we you know, wanted to f find a way around that. So we have a duck control, which will, um, uh, you know, gently duck the LFO effect at the start of a note. So you can set that in milliseconds uh, and it works very well. It ensures that you always get a sharp transient. Um, depth control again. You don't have this on the original on a on a physical vibraphone, um, but it, it's nice to have. Uh, the natural effect would have it be on 100%, so you're completely fading between the two layers. But if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to make that more gentle, you could I'll put it back on 100. Um, now, if you click this layers button. What this does, it, and I'll sw and switch the motor off, and you now get both sampled layers sitting on top of each other, and you can hear them both at once. So you can detune them, which is nice. And you can get really extreme. You hear a start of the beating starting to happen. You can put one of them out of phase for a slightly thinner effect, or you can swap the, the stereo image. Okay, but I'm going to put that back into the traditional mode. 
Okay, um, some other features. This is the um, pedal up samples. Pedal down. Um, this tab, you have uh, envelope control. So I'll play the sequence again. So uh, if you use the attack control gently, you can give the effect of a, a slightly softer mallet, which people um, often request. Just take eight to 10 milliseconds off. You can take away that transient. Um, or you can push this back and you get a really strange effect. Vary the velocity response. It gets almost pad like if you take it really far back. Okay, put it back to normal. Uh, filters. You've got a full complement of contact filters here to choose from, which is um, which is wonderful. Um, by default, it's a very gentle low pass, but you can select a full on Moog style ladder. Take that down, you've got an envelope. Get some um, crazy filter effect. Vary that by velocity. But there's all sorts of um, contact, there's all sorts of uh, Filters in here, you have a phaser filter, which I quite like to play with sometimes. You tend to need to set that right down uh, low so you get the full range of it as it moved. Anyway, I'm gonna put that back to the default here. We've also got a high pass filter, uh, really useful just to thin out your sound in a track. And more easier and more useful than going to an EQ really um, because you often don't want the, the lower boom. Okay that's our tremolo section, uh, our tuning section. Um, more and more of our instruments are featuring this. Um, a lot of people are very interested in experimenting with alternative tunings these days um, and here we are. You see this box to activate tuning. You, you see this button lights up, you've got to click that. Um, Play a sequence again. You've got a menu of presets here. Um, Tibetan 12 note. Some are more subtle than others, but you hear can completely change the the feel of it there. Um, and also, if you want, if you don't, if you feel that a particular note is the tuning isn't quite where you want it to be, you can just you can just play here to select a note, and you can move. And adjust the sense uh, to taste. Um, and if you want to do that across all octaves, uh, you can just click all octaves and make the adjustment on the C, and then that will apply to all the Cs uh, on all octaves. So you could do a complete tuning just by doing one octave. It will it will replicate all of them. It's um, it's quite handy like that. If you turn it off again, then um, you're back to the default tuning of the instrument. Uh, this is our setup tab. Um, we have control over velocity here, um, the velocity curve. You can change the uh, sound of a performance quite a lot using this. If you bring it down so that it's um, concave, um, then you'll be mainly hitting the quietest samples. Um, if you reduce the velocity scaling, then uh, you'll hear that a bit more clearly. Um, and if you go the other way and you make it uh, Vex, then you'll be hitting the harder samples. You can see that's quite a dramatic difference. So it's um, it's very nice to tweak a perform the MIDI performance you might have in this way because you can get get a sound much closer to what you were after just just using this. Um, these knobs were called Humanize on our original instrument, and you can just vary the timing a little bit. So if you put it up here, you're going to hear it goes all over the place. subtle values and the same with the velocity you can just randomize the velocity of each note so that if you've got maybe you've got a quite repetitive MIDI sequence if you you do that then it's going to make it sound a bit more like um, a natural player's performance because each note is going to uh, 
uh, sound a little bit different. Um, finally here we have this drop down menu. Uh, you can swap the range so that you just have the sampled range of the physical instrument here or um, the extended range, the whole keyboard by default. Um, you can switch round robins on and off should you want to. And you can change the original pitch reference um, between 440 and 442. Okay, I think that concludes our front panel. Let's take a look at the uh, gentles. We've, um, this is Weaver, which uh, made its debut earlier this year on our Celesta instrument, and it's, um, it's a really fun thing. Uh, let me try and explain it. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, so if I click this, it goes into the edit mode. For some reason we're not seeing the um, note display come up here. I've got it. Ah, I'm always making this mistake. Uh, you do need to activate these tools, and this is the activate button. There's a, a handy, handy lesson for us all there. Um, you can activate this from um, any panel that you're in, which is useful. You don't have to swap back to the other tab, but you do need to make sure it's activated if you want to use it. So. So um, you've got these eight lanes here and you can choose how many lanes there are. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to pick three. So for each note you play, we'll play uh, successive sequence lanes. Now this is simpler than it sounds. If I play one note, you'll see C4 and it just plays this. If I play two notes at once, C and E, the second note will play the second lane. And if I play three notes, a chord, you'll see the E uh, we're playing all these three. Now you can choose whatever sequence you want in each of these. You can change the rate it plays so you can make one of them really fast. You can change the octaves of where the hits are. You can vary the spacing the hits using our Euclid knobs here, similar to our circular Euclid sequencer, it will space them out evenly. And there are different preset tools here which are very useful. Um, you can reverse your sequence, you can shift it all to the right, you can copy and paste, you could repeat the first half. Uh, just things to make things, um, tools to make things a little bit quicker. And you have a lot of really nice presets um, which are a great way to get started. Um, some of them are very nice, most of them are very nice. Now this button is mute input. You often find um, that if you hear the original notes you play, they sometimes get in the way of the sequence. So it often works better to mute input, but that, that's an option really. Um, you can choose either way, De depends on what you're doing. So it can be used a bit like a delay effect. I mean, this makes it, this is like a kind of some kind of sequencer here, um, but we have a decay control, so you can make sequences just decay away after you play. Which is also quite a pretty effect, and you can just step through these. Step through the presets. I mean, you get you get things that um, inspire you to start whole tracks here, and, and I have done in fact. Okay, and the other gentle we have is um, Jammer. Jammer, more familiar to lots of our users. Uh, it's a bit like an arpeggiator. Um, I'm always having this trouble. I need to put the length up. Or do I? Evolve mode. So you've got two modes in Jammer uh, loop mode, where it functions very much like a normal arpeggiator, and you can set the number of steps it will loop by, so you could have quite a short one. 
which is cool in itself. Or you can switch this to Evolve, which is the more interesting side of Jammer. Um, so in this mode, the uh, you can set the notes that are generated to jump around randomly according to certain parameters. So uh, this isn't zero, but you can change the um, you can randomise the note and the octaves where that will jump. You can introduce um, gaps which makes it sound more like a uh, kind of performance. You can modulate velocity. The steps. And introduce timing. Randomization. Uh, again, you can latch. You can, this doubles the notes. Uh, which just gives it a thicker feel actually, it's often quite useful. And you can choose to re-trigger all successive notes, either join the sequence that's already playing or re-trigger the sequence as you go. <coughs> now in Jammer, you can force um, the sequence to a scale. So you could have it set to, to all notes, and you play freely, or um, if the piece you're working on is in E major, then you can force it to E major and everything you play will be forced to the scale. You can change the up and down, up, down direction. Okay. Um, that's, and the last thing about Jammer, I should say, is the preset wheel. Um, so this has uh, 12 slots, and each one could contain a completely different preset. So it's, it's already filled. So what you do is you can assign a MIDI controller, and as you play, you can just swap around a bunch of your presets. You can see on the screen the preset changes. So you would, uh, if you liked a, a preset, you would store current preset, or you could store it in all positions. Um, you can go to another one, it would be back current one. Um, lots of fun to be had. Okay, um, finally let's take a look at the effects section. This has become, um, this is our new Contact 6 based effects page, which we're featuring on our uh, current releases. Um, at the top here, we have three insert slots. Now, uh, what's, what's nice about Contact 6 is you get some of their uh, newer effects that they feature, NI features plugins, and they're all in contact, which is great. Um, things like Replica, which is a really great delay. Um, it has various modes like uh, analog and tape. Well, I really like it. Um, I like to use it not not just as a delay, but as a kind of modulation thickening device. As you can hear. Sounds really cool. Really organic. Okay, and you can pick whatever you want in these three slots. So in the next one, um, transient. Sounds pretty good on this. You can bring out that. Bring out that attack. But you can also pick um, a limiter. Other new effects are things like Coral, which is a kind of um, a very uh, in depth um, chorus effect with various different modes and styles. Uh, things like Flare, which is a sort of um, more flanger based. Uh, Leslie's cabinet tape processor. We've got our custom Sonic Chairs custom ring mod here, which is cool. You can 
can choose to modulate by a fixed pitch or frequency or the last two notes. And you can just bring up a, a small amount, which is a nice effect. Let's give some edge. Okay. Uh, this is the um, solid bus EQ, and I solid bus EQ, which is uh, a decent sounding EQ, and you've got four bands here. And um, regular users will be familiar with our space processor. This features um, a mature selection of our own custom IRs, many of them taken from spaces we've recorded in. This is the All Saints. Uh, church we recorded the choir in, mostly known here. Um, there's various other studios that will remain nameless for now. And gear, um, so various plates. And, uh, and some more effects based things. Ambient IRs like this, this one's great. adjust the width. You can flip your stereo image with this switch. Got saturation control. Okay. Okay, I think that covers it for Vibraphone. Um, enjoy. <laughs>